How do you actually set up a rabbit colony so that you have success? G'day there, I'm Dana from Piwakaka Valley Homestead. At the moment I'm doing a series on raising meat rabbits in colonies and I've actually got a great book that I have put together. I've put a link to it down below. It's called Raising Meat Rabbits in Colonies and it's all the information that I've gathered over the years of raising our meat rabbits and I've put it all into one place as a resource for you. A rabbit colony is somewhere that your rabbits all get to live in like a communal area. Colonies come in all sorts of different shapes and sizes. It might be as simple as raising a doe and a buck in a large cage together. And it can be as simple as your grow out tractors that's considered a colony. It's anywhere those rabbits can express those natural social behaviours. We live in New Zealand so to put some context around this we have a virus that they kindly released here to try and deal with the wild rabbit population called rabbit khaleesi virus and it is devastating. We can't raise our rabbits on grass. Rabbit khaleesi virus can survive on hay for up to three months. So we have ours in a shed that we have specifically built as a rabbit colony. At the moment we've got mini lops hanging out there and some chickens because we've run out of chicken houses. There are a few things that a colony will definitely need one is some space. To calculate how much space you need, a buck will need 10 square foot, that's equivalent to one square meter, and a doe will need at least 20 square feet to allow for both her and her babies up until they're about five or six weeks old. If you can allow your rabbits more space than that, then that's always better. A buck and two does, so an area that's about five square meters or 50 square feet is adequate for them to be in as long as you've got somewhere else to put your grow outs once they are weaned. Another way of raising them is to have them outside in a paddock where you need to around the whole perimeter you need to dig down two feet so you'll probably need yourself an excavator or something and put some wire or some tin or some metal something down to stop the rabbits digging out under the fence and then you can put the dirt back up against it and that then you've got yourself a rabbit proof friend. If you've got sky predators it's really important to give them lots and lots of hides. You will probably lose some to the sky predators. Owls will get them, hawk, falcon, any of those birds of prey will swoop in and get a few. That's one of the reasons why they reproduce so readily to make up for the fact that they are in fact prey animals. You may lose a few but some people consider that's okay. Other places don't have sky predators, they have more ground predators in which case they'll put an electric wire around. So you really have to think about what will be appropriate for your situation. For us, our rabbits are totally in a shed and we bring them fresh grass from an area that the wild rabbits can't get to. So once you've worked out what area you're going to have, you need to work out what you're going to put on the floor. Rabbits, if they can, love to burrow in the dirt. Obviously, if you've got a shed with a concrete floor, that's not an option. But you can put other things down that they can sort of dig and bury into. Uh, so deep bedding is a really great idea for rabbits. Adult rabbits generally will just go in one corner. The babies are a bit useless and will poop and pee all over the place. You can use like the wee wooden pallets, hay, straw, you can use wood shavings. If you're using wood shavings, try and stick as best you can to pine shavings. Um, cedar's not very good for rabbits. Or you can choose to put in dirt. I know of at least one colony where they've got a massive inside area so they put actually built a big high tunnel for their rabbits to live in and then they brought in a big mound of dirt and compacted it in the middle and the rabbits all just naturally burrowed into there and the upside to that is any urine that the babies do just soaks into the soil if you keep them in a big paddock you know give it a good spray off with some water if you're not getting rain rabbit owners that i know if they haven't had rain that week, they'll give it a spray off with the hose just to dilute that urine and get it to soak away. If you've got them in a shed, you'll need to do a spot cleaning at least once a week and then deep cleaning where you dig out all the deep litter at least once um, every couple of months, preferably once a month, just to keep the environment nice and clean for your rabbits. Rabbits do tend to get a disease called coccidiosis which lives in the poop. So to keep your colony free of coccidiosis it's really important to keep that poop cleaned up. The best way to avoid a coccidiosis outbreak is to intermittently give your rabbits a coccostat or you can breed for resistance which is usually when you don't treat specifically for it and the breeders that survive and the young that don't seem to be affected by it are the ones that you keep as your breeders. 
And there are rabbit colonies that have developed a really good resistance to coccidiosis. But that can be a lot of work and you can lose quite a few rabbits in the process. So I'm going to leave that with you whether that's something you want to look into or not. Rabbits will need plenty of places to hide and some places to nest. We have built this nest box thing which is just a whole lot of nesting boxes all in a row with one big lid that lifts up. You can use big buckets with holes cut in them. Rabbits will happily nest in like a tyre. If you have a tyre sitting on the ground you can use bits of pipe. Even cardboard boxes they will eat the cardboard boxes. Wooden boxes are even better. But for every rabbit you have it would be great for you to have at least one to two nesting boxes because they will fight over them they all have their favorite and it's not unusual to sometimes have two or three rabbits all nest in the exact same spot which is not so bad if they have their litters within a day or two and they'll all just go in um, and feed whoever's hungry if you've got a mixture of ages in that nest it doesn't work quite so well the bigger ones will eat more milk and the younger ones tend to not do so well. The other thing you'll need obviously is some food and water. If you have a big colony set up where you're running multiple bucks then each buck will have a harem of girls so you might have usually about one buck to every eight to ten girls and so if you have a really big colony each of those bucks will need their own food and water station for their harems. The bucks themselves generally aren't quite so territorial it does tend to be the head doe within each of those harems that keeps everybody in check in your rabbit colony the rabbits will need to be able to be protected from the wind and the rain and the scorching hot sun they don't so much mind the cooler temperatures but if it's too hot they will really suffer this might mean you want to set up some fans within your colony set up or make sure you've got a nice big tree or set up some tarps for shade or even allow them to burrow. If you let them burrow they will self-regulate their own temperature generally because they just dig deeper if it's too hot or too cold. In a colony the rabbits obviously will need to build their nests so they need to have access to hay at all times. It's always cute to see a bunny rabbit running around with the hay sticking out their mouths while they're off making nests and that's usually a sure sign that you're going to have babies within the next 24 to 48 hours. We don't actually currently have meat rabbits at the moment. My children have got their mini lops in the colony. We stopped having meat rabbits when I got pregnant with number four. Um, I was doing most of the processing myself and it just got too much. So we do plan on getting back into them, but it's just not something we're doing at the moment. This is our main colony shed that we set up. It's nothing fancy. These are our nesting boxes. This is one of the grow out pens. We used to have a couple of them here that we used for the grow outs. I just had a triangle and they would hang out in there. not so nice in there now it's had chickens in it if you want to know more about our way of raising meat rabbits in a colony I suggest you check out my book I've put a link to it down below and that's where I have put all the knowledge that I have in my head I put it all on paper so that somebody else can read it and absorb it it's really easy to read and I recommend you give it a look I hope you found this video useful. If you have, hit the like button. Consider subscribing to our channel. We bring you videos twice a week on growing and preserving your own food. We'll see you in the next one.